Paul, you think people were wrong to think the Fed might pivot. You think they stay tight and, and are in a, uh, they're going to be raising interest rates till the, even in the second half of next year? Probably not into the second half of next year, but they're definitely not pivoting anytime soon. So I think what people are, are getting wrong is, you know, the last 25 years, CPI inflation never went above 2.5%, even in expansions, even in bull markets, boom economies. Um, so the Fed was able to just focus on the unemployment rate. And as soon as it went up, they eased. That's not going to happen this time because the inflation rate is going to be sticky. And as the unemployment rate goes up, the Fed's still going to have to keep interest rates high. And they may even have to continue to tighten even if the unemployment, even when the unemployment rate goes up. So probably into the first half of next year, but probably not, not, not the second half. Okay, so but you see inflation moderating, but that I guess that's that's the key term, moderating, and we're we're at, we're at high enough levels to where it's still going to be uh, too high, uh, even maybe a year from now. Yeah, so there's the easy part of the inflation drop and the hard part. The easy part is right ahead of us, and that's goods inflation. So. As uh, you heard Jim talk about in the last segment, um, retail sales are falling, so retail, things are soft. Uh, retailers may have over-ordered, double-ordered, things like that. So goods inflation plus the dollars, you know, very high, and is, that's going to help goods inflation. So uh, goods inflation is in front of us. We're going to see a rapid drop in the price of goods. But what's going to be the problem is things like rent are going to be really sticky. So it's, you could see CPI going from, you know, eight to four, four and a half really easily. And that last 1%, 1 percent, 1.5% is going to be much more stubborn. And that's where the Fed is going to have to dig its heels in and, and stay, keep interest rates high. They may pause, but they're certainly not going to ease until they see CPI below three. Paul, you, I think you also, and it, it, I, there's so many back and forth that, that I'm trying to understand what you're saying. You think a resumption of the bear market rally is possible if we do see some softer inflation numbers. But that says a lot. So the rally, we could start going up again, but it's, it's still a bear market, and it's, it's just a temporary thing. Yeah, I think coming out of Jackson Hole, I don't think Powell is going to, Chair Powell is going to say anything that's going to surprise the markets beyond what's already been priced in for now. Um, so we get out of Jackson Hole, we see another good inflation number. Markets could very easily continue to rally, maybe touch the old highs in the S&P we saw last summer. but. That's going to be the kind of the sugar high, and that's going to be where we have the easy part of the inflation retracement happens, and then rents are going to be sticky. You know, so so CPI is both goods and services. Services are a lot of that's rent, and everyone knows rents have gone up. So as we see inflation fall, markets will respond to that. The Fed may even pause, but we're not going to go to two two and a half percent inflation very easily. And that's when it's going to get hard again. So could very easily see a very nice fall market rally continuing on. But once inflation, once it becomes clear that, that inflation has a sticky part to it, that's when things are going to get tough again. So on the S&P, what were the summer highs? So what are you saying we could get back to on the S&P? And then it, oh, in a, we, if it is a bear market, yeah. do we see new lows below 3,600 eventually in this cycle? I don't think so. I think we're going to be in a really frustrating range where it's going to be easy to get chopped up. And uh, we could very easily go back to last year's highs of, you know, 4,700, 4,800 on the S&P 500. That's certainly possible. I don't think we make new highs. Um, but at the same time, I don't think the Fed is going to surprise the market or, or earnings are going to fall to the point where we need to go, you know, below 36, 3,700 on the S&P. So it's going to be this really frustrating range that, that people don't like and are, it's hard to, to manage money in. Um, you need to be patient. But um, uh, once we get inflation under control and the Fed sees that, then we could go see resumption of, you know, the rally. But right now, I think we're going to be in this frustrating range that's just not going to be fun for anyone. Well, then you probably, under 4,000, you could probably buy stocks you like then because uh, when this is finally resolved, your entry point will be, and you don't think we're going to 3,000 on the S&P. No, no. So. No, so we've switched our strategy from selling rallies to buying dips. Absolutely, uh, you did. below okay. four thousand. Yep, buy dips. Keep some powder dry. Buy dips because a, a, a year from now, stocks are probably going to be higher. In addition, you know, other asset classes are getting very interesting, right? So, so high yield bonds got to about nine percent yield or eight percent now. Anything above eight percent is good value. So we could see them go yields go higher and high yield. Of course, we could. But, you know, 8 or 9% high-yield bonds start to be a good, good competition for stocks as well, because it's hard. You know, we had a tremendous run for the past 10, 15 uh, years. It's hard to see stocks doing what they did. So, right. um, you know, there's other places to go to make money.